in mists and shadows, a mournful bell tolls its last, the veil broken. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Curse of Strahd. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and joining me this week, <laughs> my five <laughs> freaky friends, my <laughs> freaky friends, <laughs> you were having uh, a bash, having a bash, uh, have joined me for another uh, uh, jaunt in the wonderful world of Barovia <laughs> in the Curse of Strahd module. A jaunt, yeah. a little jaunt, a little happy jaunt. Little jaunt. Um, mm. Jolly jaunt. I well, just realised that your camera's way better. <laughs> my camera? Your setup. Yeah, I, I changed it. I made it much better. I've kind of, I have to move some stuff around, but yeah, I, I kind of made it a little bit better. Uh, thanks, Chris Trot. Thanks. Um, Boggies. A couple of... <laughs> Boggies! Very good, everybody. Uh, anyway, <laughs> oh, no. a quick thing. <laughs> Couple of quick things before we get started. Um, yep. If you didn't, uh, there was no High Rollers Eroes on Sunday. Instead, our lovely Kim, that way, uh, did a horror one shot. That's now out on YouTube and the podcast. So if you missed that, definitely go and check it out. <laughs> That's Kim. Uh, watch Kim, Kim's one shot. Uh, I did get updates. I got updates throughout Sunday of they're driving me mad, Mark. It, what I just don't want. <laughs> it was lots mad. of sort of. <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> apparently, it was very much the other way round. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can check that out. That is all available. That's all out on YouTube and podcast and stuff uh, as well. Um, and then I, there was quite a lot of questions about the new D and D show I am DMing for Wizards of the Coast and my pals Anna, uh, Nate Sharp, Mika Burton, and Shady Penguin. That is also now out on YouTube. It's going up on the Wizards D&D channel. So lots of people have been asking me, is it going to go up on YouTube? Yes, it's all on the, the Wizards website. I'm not responsible for like any of the uploads. It's not going to any of my stuff. That is all Wizards. So if in doubt, message Wizards uh, Twitter or check their YouTube channel. Um, the only other thing is that it will be getting a podcast, apparently. So that is uh, kind oh. of exciting news. They are actually going to do it as a podcast available for folks um, there'll be more information on that coming soon, hopefully. Um, so I know a lot of people are asking about that as well. Uh, and that's called The Knights of Evening Star. It's a brand new D&D show I'm doing for the D&D folks um, late at night, 12 midnight, to be precise, for the UK yeah. audience. Yeah. So yeah. until 2 a.m. That was a late one. Late um, and yeah, just after Chaos Twins, though. So you can you can watch your Chaos that's Twins the after, yeah. and then yeah. come on over. Uh, come, on for some, for... come on down! Come on down! <laughs> Um, we got and that's pretty spooks. much it. Oh no, wait, Curse of Strahd. Unless, that's, well, <laughs> you you did have some spooks. Um, is there anything that I need to mention? Mm, you know, the, uh, the best D and D stream online. That, yeah. Well, sure, Chris Strahd. I did forget to mention that. You're right. Hey! That we are. We, <laughs> we are just. We're just. <laughs> we're just. We're just swell. We've done we? it. We did it. Underrated. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> right. With that, shall yeah. we recap what happened on the last episode of Curse of Strahd and then play some yes. D&D? Absolutely. Sounds good. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Last time on Curse of Strahd, searching the grounds of Argen Vostholt for a place to rest, a party decide to seek refuge in a large stone mausoleum in the mansion cemetery. Cautiously entering, they rest, but as night falls, a dreadful being peers inside before Ziki and Zeros. Seemingly admiring Ziki's artwork, Strad von Zarevich has come. Seeking the tome the party had discovered, and of course, his fair Irina, Strahd attacks the party in a rage, charming Xeros in the process. A desperate battle ensues, and Shadow delivers a powerful blow that seems to harm Strahd in greater ways than could be believed. Jesper flees with Irina, making her invisible, and with no means to find them, Strahd, consumed by hate and rage, focuses his cruelty and shadow beyond the veil, killing her and flying away with her body. Now the party are left, injured, 
divided and in the shadow of Argen Vostholt. And that, my dear friends, is where we begin today with uh, the party. I believe that Irina, Jesper, and uh, Rose are all outside in the cemetery. Uh, you were looking up at the... There is a stone kind of curving staircase that leads to a large chapel-looking door that Jesper tried to open, but seemingly is barred from the inside. Um, you see just the faint remnants of a, a, a typhoon of bats swirling, storming, combining together and chasing after their dark master into the cloudy night sky of Barovia. Zeros uh, had just left the mausoleum, I believe, leaving Ziki to heal Ismark inside, who seems that he has recovered from a near-death experience thanks to Ziki's healing magic. Uh, and yeah, that is where we begin today's episode. Okay. Are we still in combat so, with these bats? Nope, nope. The bats have chased after their master, leaving you alone. Um, Perfect. You are left in a solemn moment. There is no sound. There is no noise except for perhaps a gentle wind. The ground is still shrouded in a thick grey fog. And you are left with just the memories of what has taken place. Xeros, technically you are still under the effects of Strahd's charm. But you know, his only orders to you, uh, or his only kind of suggestions to you, did not involve... Any sort of like, you must immediately start, you know, harming the party. He's now left, so, you know, potentially can't do it. But those, just keep in mind that that is still a thing in your mind. You still consider him a uh, trusted companion, I believe, is the phrasing on the ability. Um, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm still not following that order of restrain. Yes, because what's the well, point? Well, it's. I it's also not an order. It's a case of he told you to do that in the moment because he obviously wanted yeah. to do something and that to you was like, oh, yes, of course, my good friend. I'll grab him. But now that Strahd's left, you're like, oh, well, maybe it's not so much point. The only other thing for Xeros is, of course, Xeros now knows the identity of Titania, uh, the yes, soul of Titania and, and where it belongs. I also very pointedly told Zeke about it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Made a big point about that. Because she knows. She, she knows. Yeah. Um, uh, Jesper and Irina, I believe, are still invisible. Um, mm -hmm. So, Rose, you are just stood out in the middle of this fog-shrouded cemetery looking at where Strahd brutally murdered uh, your friend and flew off with her body uh, as Xeros approaches <laughs> from behind. And with that, I am done speaking. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay. For now. That's lovely. For now. I'll leave it to you guys for a second. Well, I do. Uh, is, is, things. is there um? Sure. Did Shadow drop anything when she was taken away? Was there anything? I will that leave you had that to the time or anything. Kim, you are more than welcome. Anything you are holding or. So, holy symbol, perhaps, or something like that. Definitely. Um, I need probably to not like dig out. I don't think she had anything. Yeah, um, I had some cat bones on me. Do you want that? Do you want some cat bones? Um. <laughs> no. I think at, at most you probably would have had um, some sort of holy symbol in your in her hand. Yeah. So I would um, say probably the scarab beetle um, holy yeah. symbol, like it was on her art, like the kind of scarab beetle necklace yeah. uh, brooch that was her center. That would probably be. Um, thing. She did have some scroll, spell scrolls and stuff like that, but I think that would have... Just for all the important no. stuff that we can use. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking more that she would probably go and look for personal. her holy sh holy symbol and personal things, not the useful things, the sure. personal. Um, yeah, well, you see it just glinting in the moonlight, whatever dull moonlight breaks through the clouds. You see that golden scarab. Um, probably on uh, on the back of the scarab, maybe. I don't know, Kim, would the, the dark circle... Um, be there as well yeah. yeah so for the first time you can kind of as you hold this golden insect in your hands you can see that there is a black almost like an eclipse uh engraved into the back and it's kind of painted black to give it that eclipse look um. a 
think Rose would just go over and pick that up and just just be looking at that. She probably wouldn't bother doing anything else at the moment. Just find it in the in the fog. Uh, Zeros and Ziki. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think with the revelation of Tatiana, I think he's still trying to find where they've gone, but like they're invisible, right? And he's got yeah, no idea which around. direction they went. Um, yeah. So I've got no clue where to look, really. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, a cool friend just killed a not so cool friend, cool friend. as far as Xeros right. uh, <laughs> is concerned with Shadow. Like, Wait, what? I guess. Like, Strahd, you know, he did what he did. I'm all right with that. Did, did Strahd's he had a cool to. friend? Yeah, he's a charmed Because <laughs> he's charmed. He's charmed, oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, love that guy. Me and him, we go way Ziki. back. <laughs> what about Ziki? Think... Uh, you see Ismark, like, kind of coughs. <clears throat> like a thick black icker comes up from his lungs, but... He looks far better than he was momentarily, but he's still kind of dazed. If you wanted to rush off after Xeros, you could. Um, but you uh, have I'll saved his sure life. He's okay. I'm just asking yeah, he how of... he's doing, how he's feeling. <gasps> I glimpsed the other side. See, Irina. Where is Irina? Is she safe? Did that did that monster take her? <sighs> I I don't know where she's gone. I think I think Yes was taken her. I, I don't know. Uh, Strad's gone too, but I'm not sure where they've gone. Uh, they were invisible. Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Oh, you saved her. Eh? Thank you, Ziki. And he kind of holds up like a hand to you. He's like, thank you. You saved my life. I thought I saw oh. it all flash before me. I thought that Barovia had finally claimed. I wouldn't like to have you fall into him. Thank you, my friend. Oh, come, so come. Uh, and he kind of pulls else. himself up. He's like, let's go find the others. Come. And he kind of pulls himself free, hey. picks his axe up off the ground, um, you can see he's still injured, but he's yeah, all the poison and stuff like that has faded from him. Um, he seems to be uh, just just badly injured at this point. You can see he is covered in quite a few, probably clutching his side quite badly, blood sort of dripping and dribbling uh, from various wounds. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Jesper and Irina, who are currently still invisible, um, and Rose, who is closest to the tower, uh, you do hear some very heavy grunting i suppose um and banging um and the sound of something very heavy something very wooden and heavy and wooden being dragged and scraped <laughs> where in which direction is that from us uh from behind the door that you and irena are currently stood at oh you hear like a heavy breathing uh And you begin to see the handle, the, the door handle begins to turn Aina. and twist. Quickly. Yes. Uh, is there some sort but of... Shadow. I know. I know. Let's not yeah. make her life. Uh, let's not do this in vain. Okay. Focus. What'd you do? What'd you do? So is there some sort of ledge uh, towards yeah. the window here? So that we you basically kind of... have walk along on either side of you you've got like a big stone like turret like a tower yeah. um that's on one side of you and the the staircase kind of curves up around it um like a snake coiling around it um the other side is just a drop it's about a 10 foot drop down to the grass cemetery below um yeah. and you can see yeah this this chapel window basically and can we walk out to the window is what i'm saying can we yeah yeah yeah, yeah we can check. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, you can't see Irina either, but yeah, you can kind of uh, pull Irina, her over and chill. I, I'm, I'm moving Drop towards down. this window quickly. Something is Drop. behind the door. <laughs> Just as you drop down, um, you kind of hear the so soft, wet grass kind of crumple beneath your boots. Uh, the door <laughs> opens, and emerging from it, you see. Uh, you were glancing up, all you really see is kind of tattered clothing and maybe some some worn, very worn, dirty-looking armor. As a quite a quite a powerful built figure begins making their way out, um, Rose and Zeros, you actually see the figure as they kind of peer down, looking from this twisting staircase. 
Uh, Kim, do you want to describe uh, Dog's body? You would see, um, as Mark said, a tall and powerfully built man. Um, he has a mighty pauldroon on one shoulder that's black and red. And um, where the straps kind of cross over his chest, it's a bare chest covered in old, um, very ugly looking scars. Um, he has a mass of shaggy, unkempt black and silver hair and a big black and silver um, beard that's also kind of very unkempt and very messy. His eyes uh, glow a pale orange um, and he has pale gray, slightly blue skin. Um, in terms of mechanics, he's an ASMR. Um, yeah, and uh, he also has a great battered axe strung on his back that has a few chips and dents out of it. Um, he would emerge from the darkness and start sniffing the air. <laughs> all right? You all right down there? I think... I think this thing is aware of us. Don't... don't give up. Just I mean, you low. hear something whispering below you, Donk's body. You hear a man kind of whispering from somewhere oh, yeah. nearby. Okay. You're invisible. You're not silent. <laughs> People I'm can hear you. Super when... like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I heard that. yeah. And I, yeah, I, this I this you. man seems very, very, yeah, quite good at hearing sounds and things like that. Um, definitely seems to be aware of you. Uh, you probably, Dog's body. You probably you would have heard the fighting. You would have heard the sound of uh, fighting sort of echoing through Argon Lost Holt. Um, normally, there are some of the undead creatures in this chapel. You seem to be fortunately, they fortunately appear to be missing. Um, but they've they've probably tried to attack you at least once before when you've come here. You, you coming? Like, you know, my voice has gone boomer already, but there we go, loves. Um <laughs> <laughs> You're all settle into it. I'll settle into it. I need to... Right, where is it? Where is it? What's my trigger phrase? Um, all right, then. All right. All right, geez. All right, geez. All right, geez. <laughs> it, it all right, geez. Just imagine Lufa. 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 Yes. You're making, you're making quite the kerfuffle out here. Come on. You coming in or what? It's quite dangerous out here. We don't know how dangerous you are. You don't know what we're in amongst right now. Oh, it's fine. Come on in. Come on in. It's safer in here with walls, isn't it? Come on. There's only me here. Well, going back to Australian again, so I might have to rethink this accent. Um, <laughs> 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 let me let me let me think this. I don't think I'm going to be able to sustain Cockney. Yeah, that's fine. Don't okay. apples just, and pears. Ac accent yeah, will apples change. Apples and pears. Apples and pears. You'll settle. You'll you'll settle into one. And just stick with that. I'll settle in. Yeah. Lufa. Lufa. There's a couple of ghosties in here. One of them told me to piss off, but... Come on! Australian How can we trust instantly. you? You you don't have to. But... You look like you need some help. Yes, no time, what Marina. If... We need to get inside. If he comes... If it comes back... If he comes back, yes. Perhaps if we're inside, maybe we'll be safer. We have to do something. We can't stay in this bush. I'll yeah. help you up. Where are you? <laughs> Perhaps it out... may be best to take to cancel this spell now. But he could still be here. He seemed to be flying off with, with Shadow's body. I, I don't think he's still here. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. I'll drop the invisibility. And then give sure. Arena a boost up. Sure. So yeah, Dog's Body, these two figures kind of emerge next to you. One is a, a Vistani, a Vistana. You've, you've seen the Vistani before. You know what they look like, the way they dress. Uh, the other one is very clearly a Barovian woman, um, but she definitely still has her soul. You can tell that she is not one of the soulless Barovians that you've probably maybe seen patrolling through the woods. Um, very pretty, very, 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 very pretty. Blonde, uh, kind of dark, darker skin, um, very elegantly kept. Down the steps in the graveyard, you see... A dragonborn, which you recognize, being from from Faerun yourself, you you understand, you you know, you recognize dragonborn, um, as well as a human woman, 
with a bow who seems to be clutching something in her hands. Uh, emerging from the mausoleum comes another dragonborn, white this time, along with a very injured another Barovian man um, who kind of follows up behind them. Uh, I'll I think offer a hand Rose... to Irina. Sorry, you go, Kay. That's okay. I think that Rose will just walk up the steps and just walk into the door, just not say anything to anyone, just walk inside. Okay. Still sure. probably yeah, looking yeah, yeah. the, the scarab beetle in her hand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so yeah, you see this this human woman kind of walks up past you, uh, dog's body, and makes your way inside. Rose, uh, you're the first one to kind of step inside outside of this stranger who's just appeared. Um, inside, it is uh, very clearly a chapel that you walk in, you, you walk into. Uh, cracked wood pillars support a wooden U-shaped balcony that overhangs this stone-walled chapel. Narrow archways lead to spiral staircases that curl up to the balcony, and a door set into the north wall has... Well, this is the door that you're entering from. Um, at the east end of the chapel rests a stone altar flanked by iron candelabras. The altar is carved with a rising sun bas relief, and there are tall arching windows set with panels of stained glass behind it. Um, there's a lot of like broken glass and broken debris across the floor, and some of the fog from outside has drifted in through the windows. Um, and yeah, that's that's all you see as you step inside. But yeah, you move past this quite powerfully built fellow uh, and make your way inside. What about the rest of you? All right, lovely. <laughs> she's not going to um, say anything. She's just going to keep walking. She's not so, even going to look at you. She's just going to keep walking through. She's still looking at the scarab. Sure. She's holding it in Quiet one. Quiet one it is, then. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, Irina steps in after Rose, kind of um, following very quickly. She looks very skittish as she looks at the broken window um, and the doorway. I don't know if we can stay in here. The broken window may give him a way to come back inside. Uh, she kind of begins sort of like scanning the area around as she does so. Uh, yes, but follows, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I, I walk in. Where are the... Uh, yeah. Where are the dragon born? Oh, you look behind you and you can see the two of them uh, together with Ismark um, making their way towards the stairs. What about you, uh, siblings? Uh, I mean, I don't know what to make of this guy, right? Like, doesn't want our trust or doesn't expect it. It makes it easy for me. Sure. Um, so yeah, I'll sort of follow cautiously with these two. I feel like I'm now... Protecting my two charges, both Ismark yeah. and Zeki. <laughs> sure, what are you talking about? Ismark's fine. He can look after himself. Um, how tall is Zeros? Is who's taller, Dog's body or Zeros? I don't know. Interesting question. I'd probably say about the same, maybe. Yeah, I think I have Ismark. the same con. Dragonborn height. <laughs> Dragonborn are generally they're normally pretty tall, but you can be any height you want to be, really. Um, 50 feet. Yeah. Well, not okay. <laughs> Wide. Not quite. <laughs> you know, anything um, reasonably medium-sized. I mean, I'm taller than Zeki. I think that, that goes without saying. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, so you and Dog's Body are probably very equal in height. Um, Xeros probably is a little bit more muscular, but m m more because you think Dog's Body's kind of been a bit sort of malnourished um, or probably has like, you know, old scars and things like that. Xeros looks a bit more healthy uh, as you make your yeah, way Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Nice sauce. Yes, guys... follow... Yeah, I think I'll be um, slinging uh, his mark over one of my shoulders and slowly just oh, make yeah, sure he like he'll... safely. He'll take the, he'll take it because he is definitely sort of still injured and he'll kind of like uh, sling his arm over your shoulder and stuff like that and walk with you, kind of help, lets you take his weight a little bit. Um, but he still has the sword in one hand and he's still looking around uh, very, very nervously uh, as you guys make your way back up the, uh, into the, the chapel. You all emerge into this stone building um, and as the as the last person, Zeke and Ismark, enter, uh, a gust of wind seems to blow and the big heavy door shuts behind um, 
and you just hear this kind of <sighs> echo through the whole building as you all take residence in Argon Vostok. I love that noise. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Sure. Oh, it's, it's like Mark. Uh, yes, but thank to you. The morning, Lord, that you survived. Ah, uh, Ziki. Ziki was the one that came to my rescue. She saved me, and thank you for looking after Irina. Whatever magic you did, it worked. Uh, I can't believe he couldn't find her, but... And then he kind of looks towards Rose and stops himself speaking. Um... There's nothing I could have done. I'm, I'm sorry, Rose. She's not gonna say anything, and she doesn't look upset. She's just yeah. got like her face is just expressionless, and she's just staring Blank. straight ahead of her. She's she's nothing, nothing. And she just Irina really like carefully. Um, probably wraps it in a piece of spare piece of fabric or something and puts it into her pocket. Mm -hmm. Cool. Do, do you need healing, it's Mark? I, I wouldn't say no, but perhaps we have more pressing concerns right now. Don't your magic? You've seen how long it takes to get good night's rest here in Borovia. Perhaps if we can find somewhere to rest for a an hour, or perhaps you could leave me somewhere safe while you search for the relic, and I can get some of my strength back. Very well. And what of you, stranger? What brings oh, you me? here? Voice Why is gone are you again? here? <laughs> I think I'll just be Australian. <laughs> oh, just roll with it, yeah. whatever comes out. <laughs> He's a man of many cultures. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I was. <clears throat> Maybe I'll just change it to Posho. What her? Sure. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Whatever's easiest, because I've got to keep this up for a while here. Yeah? Uh, I, I, I was just in the area. I heard some noises. Thought I'd come through. Just, yeah, looked out. Saw a dreadful kerfuffle. Oh, that large fellow. Hmm, yes. What? Thought I'd help. So Good you lady. have no affiliation with Strad? Ha! <laughs> no. Nor the evil entities of this cursed place. Oh, uh, this place? Hmm. There's a few things here. I don't know if I'd call them evil as such. Uh, there's a few, a few ghosties. A few. Have you, have you ever encountered revenants before? Nasty, nasty bit of work. They would be evil, yes. But uh, for the most part, there's a few ghosties here, and uh, one of them told me to piss off. Um, but I just. Ignored it. Tried to come help you lot. Was a bit late. Sorry. You you You're... came to help us. Oh, I heard you. You know, heard you heard you having a fight. Tremendous noise you made, and I thought, hmm, ghosts so probably haven't... aren't going to enjoy that. You haven't been following us then. No. Okay. Well, you do not. <laughs> Should you I? Do not. Should I? You don't look Borovian. Are you from another land like these people? Ah, yes. Once upon a time, I was. Recognize you two, sort of. Well, I recognize Dra Dragonborn. It's been a while since I've tra seen Dragonborn. Aren't you magnificent specimens? Yes, delicious. Mm. Um, but yes, mm. I, I, I guess I, way of I, I'm. I'm from Faerun, I, I think, once upon a time, long time ago. Don't really remember much of it. How is it? How, how, how is the world out there? It was nice. It was really nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ziki. I will honestly wish that none of you had been brought to this accursed place. You should not have to suffer like the people of Barovia do. If you want to help, then if, if there's any way I can still do that, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to stay until it's done. I miss home, but I want to help you guys make this a better place. 
We'll make this place of we'll make this place better when that the devil is dead. The if thing that is, is allowed. I hate to mention her name, but your friend Shadow, she hurt him. Hurt him more than I've ever seen anything hurt him before. It was more than just physical pain. She broke something. Something that he was connected to. Something like that. It shows that we can win. We just need the right weapons. We need allies. But he's not unbeatable. If things had been different, if, if we had everybody together, and he kind of glances at Xeros and Jesper, uh, his eyes <laughs> kind of like very quickly like flicking between the two. I, I think that we have a chance. Uh, at least there's that. That I chance think that died. The one I don't person think so. who dealt the biggest blow is no longer with us. Then we just need to find weapons that can channel the same sort of power that Shadow did. We need to find somebody who has the power of gods on their side. If we can find that, then uh, we... I still think that we have a chance of doing this. Sh whatever she did, she's given us a chance for the future to stop him once and for all. But we need uh... more information. We need allies and, and weapons and people who know about creatures like him. Then everything must be settled here and now, before we can continue. I look to Zeke. Settled. Ismark says that we need our gods on our side. Is your god still on your side? I still feel her. I, st I still feel her inside. I still carry her faith with me. Good. I'll try and keep it burning. Do you even have a god, Zeros? No. Then you haven't even lost one. <laughs> so, how would you fight? Will you fight alongside us? Will we be killed before we kill Strahd? Tell us truthfully. So, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I consider Zero, the Strahd to be a friend right now, right? Like, I, I'm struggling to think how I would negotiate this. Am I just like, well, why are we fighting him? Why? What, what <laughs> I mean, you're him? not, you don't, you're not, it's not rendered you stupid, the charm. It no, hasn't, I just, like, I just mean, like, your mental set. I guess in my head, I will like, let you. I, I will let friend? you. I will let you interpret this as you want. It specifically states, um, for the next twenty-four hours, uh, the charm target regards Strahd as a trusted friend to be heeded and protected. You are not under his control, but you take his requests and actions in the most favorable way. Um, because he didn't directly harm you, the effect is still in place. But you also might know that maybe it's not wise to, to again, a party that is so clearly intent on harm, you might know yeah. that it's probably not a smart idea to say, like, no, he's my best pal. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. look after him. Um, I just didn't know if I'd be lying in this situation if I did say, like, you know. Maybe um, it would be. I leave uh, that to you and what you judge Xeros' intelligence to be. You've got to <laughs> put you on the, the spot. shit out of this. I'll do what needs to be done in the moment. I think you're looking the wrong way. We're meant to be joined by allies we know and trust, and yet we stand here with a Tatiana. Who? What do you I mean by that? That name, he keeps using that name. Do you know what it means? Why does he keep calling me that? Strahd seems to think you are extremely important to him. Zeros, you saw what he was doing when you first arrived here. He's obsessed with Irina. I don't know who this Tatiana is. Perhaps he, Irina looks like her. Maybe it's somebody from Strahd's past or something. Go on, Rose. Um, when we picked up the tome 
of Strad from mm. the Jesper read it out to us, didn't he? He did. And it, it was did you, Jesper, and Shadow. You, the three of you are the only ones who have read the book because I don't and think Zeke mentioned... read it. You were given it, Zeke, weren't you? But you no. didn't read no, it. No, I didn't read it. Yeah. But it and it, it mentioned read. Tatiana. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, this is the first yes. time she's spoken since anything. The the book mentioned Tatiana. Yes. Tatiana, Hell. who threw herself off the cliffs at Castle Ravenloft. I know. I've wandered for a while now, Irina. Who is it's she? Old... What do you mean she threw herself uh, from Castle Ravenloft? Uh, who is she? Why you does know, why is he so obsessed with her? You are someone aware. from his past. You're aware that souls cannot leave this place. That is always I mean people don't like to talk about it. It's not polite and uh, yes, we know politeness means nothing here now. Look into yourself for the truth of who you are. What soul you inhabits you? You see, for a moment, Irina kind of thinks. Oh, it's probably not or twenty on this. She kind of thinks hard. She kind of holds her hand up to her head. I gotta look something up because I rolled a fucking natural twenty on this. Hang on. <laughs> um, she knows everything. <laughs> like that's well, so Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, well, uh. uh Hang on, hang on. Is Strahd? Hang on. <laughs> He's not Tatiana at all. Strahd is Zeros. She pulls her mask off. <laughs> <laughs> Zeros <knew> is Asmodeus. <laughs> Jesper's still just Jesper. He's just the only yes, children guy is. in this okay. entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you say this, and you see Irina kind of like. She thinks her brow furrows and then she kind of falls to her knees, bringing her hands up to her head. Uh, no! No, I'm Irina! I've always been Irina! Uh, my father is... my fun! She kind of like watches and the wind outside begins howling and blowing stronger. <sighs> the candelabras in the chapel fall over a metal sound ringing out. Souls! The souls of Bar Barovia begin screaming out in the wilds and then eventually you just see as like her neck snaps back her body goes goes rigid as she then relaxes I am Tatiana I am I was betrothed to Sergei Strahd's brother the wedding night he killed him she kind of blinks for a moment. I know you. For many lives I have been lost, but I know all of you. Not you, she points towards Dog's body. You are new, but you all helped me. And she looks at Ismark. Ismark is like, Irina, what are you talking about? What do you mean? She kind of like cradles his face. My brother. But also not. You have cared for me so much. But I'm not who you think I am. I am Irina, but I am also someone else. Someone who has been lost here for a very, very long time. She kind of... He, he looks confused. Almost tears welling up in his eyes. She turns back. You must destroy the devil. Destroy Strahd. He has committed something truly evil here. More than you know. I was betrothed to him. To his brother long ago, but... Strahd was envious. Obsessed with me. He claimed that he loved me, that I was to be his, but... Sergei kept him at bay. He was jealous, afraid of his younger brother. So he made a pact. He traveled to a place spoken of in our past. A place called the Amber Temple. 
and there he spoke with the dark powers of Barovia. Ancient figures, beings of incredible evil that rule over something called the Shadowfell or something connected to it. They promised him youth, power, eternal life, and he took it. And when he drank his brother's own blood within Castle Ravenloft, where we were meant to be married, he sealed that pact forever. I am sorry I did not know the danger that I placed you all in before, but I hope that you will help me now. Of course. That is why we are here. Why the cards were drawn. All of us part of this destiny, whether we like it or not. I see her blood in you. Her soul, it is still connected to you. And she points at you, Jesper, when she says this. You... It is strange for a Vistana to inherit the gift of foresight. For a man to, anyway. Oh. I, I, you I'm have still learning. I don't know. There is much that we should discuss about your lineage, but it is more complicated than you realize. Madam Ava was far more than she appeared. I do not know what next you should do. I, I am afraid that my soul has been so broken and fragmented for so long that my memories are very fragmented. But I will do what I can to aid you now. And I'm sure that my brother Ismark here will help you as well. But it is time for my soul and Sergei's soul and Strahd's to finally be put to peace. Hmm. <clears throat> well, uh, back. <laughs> this is a fine fucking mess I've walked into, eh? I should have left that bar on the door. <laughs> Oh, what a right <laughs> bunch of characters you are. <laughs> uh, if you are here in Borovia, my hairy friend, I'm afraid that you are already involved in this mess. Sooner or later, you would have fallen victim to Strahd's cruelty at some point. Better to be on the side of righteousness, along with myself and my brothers and my sisters. And he points to Jasper and Zeros and Rose and Zeke and Irina. Better to be with us. So take the fight to him. Jasper, you mentioned that somewhere in this place is the relic Madame Ava spoke of. Yes, the weapon. We need to find it. We do. I won't let him take Irina or Tatiana, whatever her name is, my sister. I won't let him take her. Not again. If he was, if he was tried to take her before, well, this time I'll be there waiting for him. Ah, and then he kind of sits down, holding his injured side. Ah, uh. Well, slow down, slow I, down. Not too I, much. <laughs> I just need I some time. I don't know how you do it, Ismark, but despite everything, you... You bring hope to us. It's all we've got left. Well. <sighs> what now? Hello, what is your name? <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, uh, Dog's Body. Cheers. Dog's well, body. you know what we are here for? You know who she is? What do you have to say for yourself? Ah. Uh... Name's Dog's Body. I like hanging out in the woods. Uh, I have not really hung out with people that much in a while. 
the you're probably here for the sword. My you voice know, changes yes. a lot when I'm nervous. <laughs> Please Can you stop fight? looking at me. Oh, mate. I flex. <laughs> Can I you ever? didn't answer the question. Want to rumble? He prefers, he prefers a very straight answer. Yes or no is generally pretty good with zeros. He understands. Yes. Yes. Good enough. The sword. Man. Do you know where it is? Hmm? The sword. Don't, don't know where it is. It's in here somewhere. Everyone knows about that. Oh. What else is in here? There was a... When we came in. Did you hear that? Oh, the creepy breathing. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. You're new here, aren't you? <laughs> a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. Yeah. Uh, so, one thing you need to know about Barovia. Everything's creepy. <laughs> Real <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lots of dead, oh, lots of dead stuff. Lots of... <laughs> yeah. What's the sun like back in Faerun? I miss it. It's so warm. And the oranges, oh. oh, the oranges are so good. Oh. So sweet. I miss Man. oranges. Me too. Oh. As, as a yeah. point, dog's body probably does smell, right, Kim? Like, is, like there oh, is a yeah. very, like, this, <laughs> this is a fellow, this is a fellow who has clearly been living out in the wilds with not a lot of, like, good food and opportunities to clean themselves to look after their gear like they're, they're pretty grim <laughs> they look like a wild fan <laughs> like it's like robin williams in jumanji when he comes out what year is it and he's got the big beard like yeah there's a bit of that going on <laughs> he's, he looks he's also, also dog's body very... looks like he's been here a while <laughs> i think yeah he he's very a bit kind of um nervous you can tell like even though he's kind of putting on this bluster you could tell he's probably a bit nervous and a bit sort of wild-eyed and a bit sort of people are talking to me and acknowledging my existence this is a bit <laughs> i mean but dogs yeah. body there's always the there's always the possibility that these people are all just you hallucinations maybe they're not even real <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. yes oh my god the character uh, traits you've, can... you've had you've had you've had people talk to you before and it turned out that they weren't real maybe these ones aren't real <laughs> Oh, Barovia, you never-ending <laughs> source oh. of joy. <laughs> I miss people. Um, what? <clears throat> what was I saying? Yeah, voice is gone again. Um, that's just part of the... <laughs> don't, Where are I don't, you from? I, I don't use madness. my voice. Part of the madness. I it just, yeah, it I don't use my voice a lot. I don't use the voice a lot, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, sorry, this is the longest conversation I've had in months. <clears throat> what? 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 Was there a, a question? I... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Everyone looks so scared. Zeros asked where you're from. By rune, mate. I said. Yes. Wow. I believe Little place. Dog's body answered that one. Do you wish to help us find this sword? Is that why you're here? You want the sword for yourself? Oh, nah, mate. Uh, I was just looking for a roof over my head. I was getting a bit tired of rain, and I'm trying to sleep. So it's you're just surviving. Cold. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> do, do you have any <clears throat> food? On I you? have some rations. That's all I've got. I'll pass. I some. have some. Okay. I have some. Oh. Thank you, uh, Tatiana, was it? Tatiana, or yeah. Irina, whichever you prefer. But yes, here, oh, and she there's... brings out, like, sort of, like, like a wrapped-up meat pie. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is Just delicious. don't, don't eat it too quickly, you need to pace yourself. And she gives you, uh, some, a water skin as well. It has a sweet wine in it. Um, but yeah. 
Lovely. Th- thank you, lady. T- tell you what. Um, yeah, I'll help you get this sword. Uh, for the food. Thanks. I'll cry. It. And he just <laughs> turns his back and starts. S- sits down. Well, that's something we have another person that can help us. Should we get a move on? I don't like to stay still for too long. Unless, Ismark, you need a rest. I feel like we've been Let's resting see. for an hour. <laughs> you definitely have. Has it been an hour in real life? Oh, it kind of has, actually, pretty much. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, you've had an hour. You've had a short rest, everyone. Everyone, you get a short rest. Nice. Let me recover nothing because. <laughs> Fight. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I laughed fire. in that last combat. That's it. So it was, Blast. Tom, it was pointed out, you can be angry at Chris Trot for this, but apparently at the end of your turn, you do get a saving throw against Tasha's, apparently. Comments were telling you. Oh. Eh, um, I mean, sure. It made it I, uh, work for the encounter, but... Yeah, I would have I would have just tackled him next turn anyway, so either way, I wasn't going to be helpful against Strahd. Yeah. Helpful for him, though. My BFF. Love that guy. He's my number one guy. I can't wait for that guy. to uh, trip us up within the next 24 hours. Yeah, sure. 24 hours. Um, uh, that's fine. Zeros, as, as you are kind of watching all of this, there is a slight building heat in the hilt of he who grins. Every time yeah. you look towards... So it's quite interesting, right? Because every time you look towards Irina Tatiana, you have the bonding of the ring that you're wearing which makes you feel quite safe and protective and and at home being close to Irina and Tatiana but every time you look at her there's this burning pulsing heartbeat <laughs> almost actually you know what it's not a heartbeat you thought it was a heartbeat it's almost like the ticking of a clock oh cool that's even cooler actually that puts me under zero pressure. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Heartbeat wasn't spooky enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, you guys get a long rest. Um, you know, throughout all long of this, rest. Ismark has kind of been... Not a long rest, short rest. Uh, Ismark has been, yeah, bandaging his wounds and he seems to be fighting fit. Um, and yeah, you guys currently stand. You have these two spiral staircases... Uh, one in the north part of the chapel, one in the south. There is also a pair of open double doors um, that seem to lead into what appears to be some sort of like maybe like a dining hall um, or something like that. Um, there are some faint glowing lights. Um, Dog's body, this is probably where you had sort of snuck into and was hang- have been hanging out for the last few days. Um, and those, are your, those are your entrances and exits, everybody. Um, do you know okay. around this place, uh, dog's body? <clears throat> Where haven't you <clears throat> looked? Uh, I've looked ground here. Floor. Yeah, you've been and mostly I've on the ground floor. There, uh, I slept under a table in the other room. Um, there's a room where the ghost told me to leave. Uh, mostly ground floor stuff. I haven't been up. Heights. Bad. Lead us towards the staircase then. Uh, hopefully avoiding that ghost. Please. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, oh, that the, means the going ghosties. out into the main foyer. Yeah, the ghosties are alright. They just tell you to leave and you just go, yeah, 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 or just, and then just, you know, whoop, hide. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I, I don't appear to have a marker on this map. But, you don't, because uh, I don't fine. have a token for you yet. Uh, I'll sort one out. Um, to be honest, with this one, I'm going to kind of theatre of the mind it anyway. Uh, you make your way... Uh, Dog's Body leads you through the open double doors into a dining room. Um, it's about 20... Uh, it's quite a large room with almost like a 20-foot-long table that has sculpted dragons for legs. Um, the chairs that surround the table of their backs carved to resemble uh, folded dragon wings and several of the chairs have been overturned, smashed to pieces. Suspended above the tables is a crystal chandelier that glows with a soft light. And standing in windowed alcoves are two life-sized statues depicting knights with dragon-winged helms and shields. Rainwater trickles through cracks in the ceiling, 
flowing down the west wall and adding to a large puddle on the floor. Uh, there are several sets of doors that lead out of this room, a uh, set to the north, a set to the south, um, and then a set to the west, and then the doors that you're coming through. Dog's body leads you through an open door into a large foyer. Uh, the foyer feels like King's Tomb. A grand staircase leads up to a stone balconies. Uh, I'm just going to move all of you guys. Whoop. Uh... Uh, a grand staircase leads up to a stone balcony held aloft by stone pillars and arches. A tall, faded tapestry depicting a nobleman in silver armor hangs from an iron rod above the staircase landing. Six sets of double doors lead from this foyer, and along the walls displayed on marble pedestals are three alabaster busts of handsome men. A fourth bust and its pedestal has been knocked over, and the shattered remains lie strewn around across the mosaic floor. Uh, various large iron chandeliers hang from the ceiling. As you enter, that same sound erupts, but this time it is accompanied by something else. A dark shadow with wings moves across the walls and disappears with a faint cool <laughs> uh, and yeah you have a large staircase leading up I don't like this but what choice do we have well if there is something here it's not attacked us so far that's what scares me it's Biding its time, if that's the case. The dragon that lived here, Argenvost, he was kind. He sought to fight against Stra and his domination, his cruelty. His knights who were once proud, noble things. They were good people here once. See it fallen into such ruin. It is sad. Let's hope they're still on um, the side of good. Yes. Kim, dog's body. Dog's body, Kim. What dog's body, dog's body, Kim. It's, they're pretty much the same. Um, <laughs> I haven't showered all day. Um, would dog's body have seen the three spooky nights that the party saw in the last, you know, however many episodes ago? Would, would he have seen, encountered them? Yeah, you've encountered them. Um, the, you tried to go in the chapel once, and they attacked you in there. You had to basically run away. Uh, they seemed pretty mindless. Not like zombie skeleton mindless. They were still sentient, but they just kept yelling at you to get out. Uh, you, you weren't welcome here. That sort of thing. Uh, and they Standard. chased you out, basically. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen them maybe in the last few hours. You were kind of avoiding the chapel. Um, hiding out here in the foyer. There's actually like a little a wine cellar that you've been sort of using as well, um, which is kind of quite secure. There's like a door that you can lock from the inside. Um, and when you heard the fighting, that's when you came to the chapel, saw that it was empty. Mm -hmm. So wherever those three were, they've gone somewhere else. Do <clears throat> Was there enough of them, like their facial features, to match them to... Well, do they look similar to the busts in here? Oh! Oh, very good question. Yes, at least one of them did look like one of the uh, the knights depicted in the busts. Yep. Nice. <clears throat> Hi. What, what are your names, by the way? I got yours, Tatiana Irina. Uh, who, who are you? Jesper. Jesper, alright. I'm Zeke. Rose. Rose, okay, I'll remember that one. Gorgeous Rose for a gorgeous lady. Zeros. Zeros. Right. Ismark. I will endeavor. Is Ismark? Yes, sorry. Got. Sorry. <clears throat> Everyone forgets uh, that old Ismark the Lesser. <laughs> Not me. Lesser for. 
we would <laughs> never forget about it, is Mark. Never. Never forget about your he sweet himbo boy. The things that <laughs> we can't the save him from. Yeah. No, like no, we want to. We're like, don't spiders. do that. Oh, he's doing it anyway. Okay. Ah! That's his mark. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the gnome in Half Life Two, and we have to try and get him to the end of the game to get an achievement. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you get, if yeah, yeah. Tom Genuinely. Tom Hazel, if if Ismark makes it to the end of this campaign alive. I will give you a personal achievement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the oh, we have wow. to do it. Brilliant. We have to do yeah. it. Brilliant. Yeah, wow. it'll be a group Even if cheese. the rest of us die. That's my again one and goal, again man. and again. Is Mark must must survive. Um, yeah, have you heard and of it's the, 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 uh, the, the guys who got the Ismark to the end? <laughs> the achievement will be called <laughs> Ismark the Greater. That's the achievement. Yeah. This is the name yeah. of the achievement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. That'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, cool. Man. So you currently uh... are in the foyer. There is a set of wooden doors to... There's several sets of wooden doors to the north. Several sets of wooden doors to the south. Judging by, Rose, you're accomplished at kind of mapping out areas and things like that. You imagine the doors to the south will lead you into the, the uh, ballroom where the giant spiders came from. That's quite easy and obvious. Uh, Dog Spotter, you know that the middle door to the north leads into the wine cellar. Um, there is a uh, another room uh, to the north, which uh, pit was like a broken bedroom, like a barracks almost. That you think um, that was it. That's that's pretty much what you know. And so then there's the stairway leading up and point wine that way, barracks that way, stairs that way, entrance that way. Uh, the three knights revenant things that chased me and threw things at me just noticed one of them looks like this fella over here and i point at the relevant bust don't know if that means anything the original residence turned into a revenant that's not good out of curiosity is there any yeah. that look like the the man that shadow described that she saw in the window up Ooh. in the tower. Christopher Walken. Shadow. None of them, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, the, the, none of these busts are Christopher Walken, no. Gosh darn it. Okay. And if I say Christopher Walken, and you, I, I refer to Christopher Walken as depicted in the movie Sleepy Hollow. Uh, uh, he has, he yeah. has that hair. Yeah. He literally has that yeah. hair and looks crazy and insane. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember yeah. what. So we saw him from like the second level of a tower, right? Yeah. So uh, it would have been the did, northeastern right? corner of the mansion. Um... Okay. Yeah, it was sort of opposite yeah. where I believe. The, the mausoleum was, but high up. Mm. Yes. That's correct stairs kind of seem to loom and stretch up the the tapestry of this nobleman sort of looking down at you quite you piously the the portrait actually the the busts don't look like the figure that you saw uh rose but the portrait over the balcony stairs does look like that man um it looks like a very well-dressed uh nobleman silvery hair but it's much neater he doesn't look as as wild as what shadow described to you Okay. Does this painting look extremely old? Yes, very old. So... Mm. We're thinking of Empire, my boy. Maybe. If he's Maybe. still around. My boy. He did, she didn't describe him as looking old, though. No, she... yeah, there was a little bit. His His hair was white. Like, his hair in this is silver, okay. but... It, he looked much. He looked a little bit older and much more wild when Shadow saw him. Um, yeah. This this painting is very quite noble, re regal looking. Very sort of not heroic, but in a sort of kindly way. There's there's a kindness about this man that you can see. Um, this man. Shadow saw him in the tower. He's still here. Okay. Right. He's still in this in this building somewhere. I believe that that is 
that is Lord Argonvost, the dragon himself, in his human form. Well, let's go where she saw him. Yes, Ooh, just be careful. Where is this shadow? I count one, two, three, four, five. Is she here? Do we need to go get her? No, we don't. Let's move. Okay. Yes, are you going to take the lead up the stairs? Yeah, I'm going to go upstairs. <laughs> okay. So, Jesper, yeah, I'm gonna on follow. the. Yeah, the two of you kind of like after Jesper's very final words. No, we don't. Uh, you lead to the rest of the crew upstairs. Uh, the balcony, um, the Let's half of the balcony, as you make your way up, two stone balconies flank the main foyer. Uh, balusters carved to resemble knights in shining armor support their elegantly carved stone railings. Weapons and shields festoon the walls along each of the, these walkways, while alabaster busts of handsome men flank hallways that lead north and south away from the foyer. I'm going to move you guys up to the second floor. Cool. So you okay. have to pick a direction at this point. This is a uh, this is where you must decide where you are going. I mean, if so the Reno, we got... coast was northeast, then you that can way. definitely head that way if you like. Yeah, um, for sure. Okay. Uh, at the west end of each balcony, you can kind of see them here. There is a spiral staircase that leads up. Um, oh, there's a third floor. Uh, there, it certainly does seem to go higher. Damn. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll keep keep going through to that northeast tower right. to see if we can spot cool. that boy. So you see, yeah, you see that the corridor turns off as you're making your way down the corridor, Xeros. You and Jesper notice that these busts. Their eyes are following you. As you move, their eyes... Very they don't move step. at all. <laughs> I draw both my... Uh, but yeah. Sword and dagger. Okay, sure. Uh, you see that the balcony turns into a narrow corridor that seems to lead to the north. Um, it, it, it turns into a T-shaped hallway that leads to the east and west. Um, and there is also appears to be an open door that leads into a room on the left-hand side as you make your way down it. Uh, along the along the balcony, there is also another door that seems to lead into a, another building. Um, you guys can see it on the map, but for better game purposes, obviously you can't. Uh, I can't be bothered doing all the dynamic light and stuff. Can that I, bleeds um... for me, Jesper. No, they're not. Keep focused. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, what's the plan? Can I have like a listen, like a really good listen, and like just see if I can hear any sounds of movement or anything, like anything weird? Yeah, um, absolutely. Make a le perceptions. Perceptiones. Oui, oui. I have advantage on oh. it. Do you? Oh, that's weird. Yes. Why would you get advantage on it? What a weird trait to have. But I rolled a six and a five, so seven. <laughs> nice. Seven. You strain your ears and you listen closely. You hear the, the steps of your companions, your new companions, making their way up the stone steps along into the balconies, glancing at each other, the whispered conversation between Xeros and Jesper. And then just in your ear, you hear, You can't escape what you are. <laughs> to oh. whom all of us no no just just uh, dog's body and ah. dog's body's the only one that hears that ah. uh, oh. Ow. <clears throat> is Mark and Irina uh, begin making their way up even Zeke and Rose in the rear um, yeah so you can see that they're also the, the balcony stretches behind you as well and seems to angle um, in a diagonal kind of heading back towards the church towards the chapel where you remember there was a, a balcony uh, in, in the chapel as well um, but yeah where would you wish to go uh, carry on north 
Okay. Um, so do you um so you start moving forward at Zeros, you see that there is the door open to your left. Do you want to investigate the room? Do you just go straight past it? Uh I think what do you think? Uh yeah, carefully sort of peek in there and just sort of scan the room before we press on. Uh sure. Uh you look inside the room, you and Jesper kind of peek in. You see two beds with torn canopies uh stand against opposite walls with a tattered rug lying on the floor between them. Set into the far wall is a fireplace black with soot. Soft hiss escapes from the hearth. Empty. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Wait, it's like constant, is it? Yeah. It's like, it kind of, not constant, like it's like constantly hissing. On and off. It comes and goes. But it, it varies in length, and yeah, it's weird. Well, uh, Rose and Ziki, are you guys going to just follow up behind the rest of the team? Yeah, I'll follow up. Um, can I cast uh, Bless at level 2 on us uh, four? So uh, me, Rose, Irina, and Ismark. Of course, absolutely. Please do. Thank you. Uh, Got a prep and Bless. I'm gonna just quickly, oh, cool. gonna. Oh, actually, this what? is not a bad <laughs> You strong boy, you'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know, I'm capable, but it still it still would be nice. Sis, <laughs> <laughs> more attacks. Just because I can doesn't mean I shouldn't. But better. <laughs> no? Wait, what? Uh... <laughs> Um, uh, this is for Dog's Body. Kim, until I sort you out a thing. Um, I am on the wrong level. There we are. Hello. There you go. There you go. So I found a man with a beard. That can be you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you want to do? Just carry on, Zeros? You want to look in the room? What's the plan? I mean, hissing Does anybody hard. else want to take the lead? Yeah. Does anybody else want to explore the hissing fireplace? Uh, Zeros is uh, hanging out back with the Rose ladies. Is... Sure. Rose is not really <laughs> in the mindset in the zone. Sure. She's she's like looking like she is. She's trying to look very composed, focused. and she's not. She's focused on not visibly looking like she's upset or annoyed. She's just looking focused, but her head is not there really. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, Ziki, Jesper, just moving up. I'm following Zeros. Um, I'm sure. just focused on the task at hand and trying to usher people along so we don't dwindle Is in corridors. Sure. Is Mark will follow up as well. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you just want to keep moving, Zeros, move yourself down the corridor. It's about another sort of like 15 feet. Um, and yeah. so, Is Mark, Jesper, and Zeros, you're basically all moving together, aren't you? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, while the rest of the group kind of move up behind, um, as you reach... Yeah. So, as you step into the corridor, the three of you, Jesper, Zeros, and Ismark, uh, you hear a loud click as the stone floor beneath you sinks in about half an inch. And... Yeah. Along where the T-junction is, a floor-to-ceiling block of stone <laughs> seals off that part of the corridor. Um, as you hear this loud oh. thunk. The two doors... Uh, oh, sorry, actually, no. What? Uh, no, it doesn't go off, actually. What am I talking about? I'm looking at a wrong section. Sorry. Uh, I, was <laughs> right. I was looking at a Can completely wrong room. <laughs> Well, All right, I'd like to move with traps in mind. <laughs> I mean, that you're <laughs> doing that. gamer. That's cool. That's called passive perception, Tom Hazel. Uh, I already have that yeah. in my end. I mean, if you want to say it happens regardless, like no, no, I was literally I was looking at a, a completely other another floor. I was looking at a completely other floor of this building. So right, we're not going downstairs. <laughs> no problemo. <laughs> T-junction downstairs. Watch out. Right. 
Yeah. Watch out. Yeah. Didn't get that uh, far. Oh, it's fine. Didn't get that yeah, far. Happens maybe. sometimes. <laughs> Uh, all right. Upstairs. Hey. We'll turn, okay. turn upstairs. around. So you guys, all, so you move towards that door. What about the rest this. of you? So Irina moves in. Um, Dog's body, Rose, Ziki. Are you guys just all following into the corridor as well? I, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. follow in. Move myself. Yes. Oh, okay, that's fine. So I cannot move no, my blood. Do you this stay behind Dog's body, or are you just moving down? I'm moving. I'm moving with the 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 back team. Alpha beta oh, yeah. squads. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as you move towards the door, Xeros, your foot sinks about half an inch into a stone <laughs> thing on the floor. <laughs> you might have me. misread where the trap was. <laughs> might have thought it was in the middle of the T-junction and it was actually at the entrance to the room. Lol. You said, uh, <laughs> you said it was in a different room entirely and I was like, oh, it's fine. We don't need to worry about it then. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. your passive still wouldn't have picked up on the trap, so yeah, yeah. Um, because you guys were moving forward. <laughs> but yeah, the the stone block seals off the T junction, uh, trapping you in this narrow corridor. There are kind of windows on either side. The doors fly open on either end, and you see uh, in each room there are a number of shadowy looking or ghostly looking uh, warriors, basically. Uh oh. Ooh. Uh and we are so so the T junction, it's like the bottom half of the T is now sealed off, right? The bottom half of the T is now sealed off, so let me Like we've just been sealed into a boss oh, room. Yeah. It's just a long <laughs> a long room with bosses on either end. Yay. So a block of stone has fallen here. Um yeah, pretty much. Um Okay. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So the doors fly open and you see these shadowy figures uh, rush out towards you. And I'm going to have to very quickly set up an encounter. Uh, I didn't do this. Well, I'm time. guessing I was, none of these boys look like uh, thingy. The uh, noble dude. No, these, no bec these guys are all... So you see they're men and women, but they're all translucent. They have a slight translucence ah. to them. Um, and... They are, they don't speak, they don't hiss, they just silently, these dead eyes, these see-through bodies just kind of turn, silently draw weapons, and kind of like at the end of Return of the King, they just kind of float towards the corridor um, right. in in a desperate one. I watched that last week. dead. <sighs> yeah. Dead, it must fall in uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's oh, four of them. Forgot to oh. include Ismark the Lesser. Oh, uh, there is. There's four of them in the room in front of you. Yes. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that other room then, as well. That open as well, well, Dog's Body, Rose, and Irina look round to see more of them begin to rush out of the other room or begin uh, emerging from the the door in the other room as well. Seven g -g -g ghosts. G -g 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 ghosts. I'm just wondering. No, we can try and get through as much as we can in, in uh, like 30 minutes. Uh, just give me oh. one turn. <laughs> I've got all my I've got all my action surge and everything. It's fine. Right, dog's body. Oh. Uh, so, uh, Ziki, initiative, please. Yeah, Ziki, please. Here we go. Fifteen. <laughs> Been Jesper. It is nineteen. Nineteen. Rose. Eight. Eight. Katie, I don't Just mind you using kind of. I, I don't. Dice yeah, I was going to say I don't mind you using normal dice. I'm using normal <laughs> dice now. I'm not using roll twenty. So yeah, uh, zero. Nice so all. Uh, Seventeen. I'm just rolling in the sixes and fives today. Um, on which note. Oh god. Seven. Seven. Uh, Jesper, you leap into the fray um, before anybody else. These things do seem to be quite slow to react to your presence. Um, and yeah, you see them yeah, beginning to rush towards you. You can see into the room, the doors fly open. Whoosh, almost with a giant gust of wind. Okay. I mean, they're translucent, right? 
Uh, they do appear to be ghostly. Okay. Going to try. Ah, I got nothing. Got nothing good against this. So I'm going to recklessly go in and try and swing my sword at them. Okay, sure. So the closest one, this one, uh, onto the left as I go into the room. Uh, I'm going to swing at them. I'm going to do it manually as well because my thing isn't working. The 20 what? plus 7, 23. Uh, 23 will almost certainly hit these this fellow, this first one. So you rush in and you can see that the room is probably once an old barracks. There are broken beds um, scattered around it and several kind of thin archway windows scattered around the room. Um, but yeah, uh, you hit. Eight points of piercing damage. As as perhaps you expected, as the weapon passes through its body, it has less of an effect than you would hope. Um, it, it has kind of, an effect. It definitely has an effect. Some parts of it are displaced. You see wisps of you know material or essence kind of drifting away from its body, but it's not as much of an effect that a, a blow against anybody else would have had. That is a eighteen for my dagger. That will hit as well. And another eight. eight. Points of piercing oh. damage. So the second blow strikes true, but again, the same thing. It kind of only just pulls away wisps of whatever this creature happens to be. Uh, anything else on your turn? Working. Uh, I call out to the rest of the party. Sure. Xeros. Uh, okay, I'll nudge up to the other one that... Um... Yes, but isn't fighting the one at the mm -hmm. directly in front of the door, and I'll try a multi attack on that. Uh, sure. oh, bonus action, um, Flamio as well. <laughs> Flamio, uh, flame on, <laughs> Flamio, <laughs> hot man. Uh, so the Wang first fire. one uh, is an eighteen to hit. Hits, uh, and that's. 16 slashing damage and 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 you see wait. that with it being a magical weapon this does strike as you intended it to uh yeah sorry i just realized i rolled a great sword so the damage is the same i just need to do fire damage which is another 2d6 uh yeah, sure. boom another eight fire damage <laughs> so as he who grins cuts through this phantom warrior uh, it pulls away, burning away some of its essence. It's still standing, but that definitely has a much greater effect. Uh, the magical weapon striking, uh, striking true. Nice. And the other one is twenty-eight damage with the twenty-one to hit. Uh, why is your he? Why is your he who grins using the command? It appears to be rolling three d six for its main weapon. Oh, it's because you re-roll yeah. ones, don't you? Because you have uh, two weapon fighting. Yeah, thing. it's greyed out. Yeah, it's greyed out. That's what oh, I just realised. Six plus four plus seven oh. is seventeen. I do have that, man. I'm impressed that it actually does that for me. Sweet. It does okay, that. Yeah. that does, that's pretty awesome. So, uh, twenty-eight points of damage total. So, with a, a kind of secondary blow, bringing the he who grew the greatsword down, you evaporate uh, this phantom assailant. Uh, <laughs> the two blows tearing it apart um, Shit, as you do cool. so. Uh, Can I use the rest however, of the movement to get all, all up no, into... No, you can't. The... Nope. Okay. You cannot. Because you right. have ignited the flames no. on the sword. And as you wield it, oh, you hear a familiar voice in your mind. <laughs> Do not forget our deal, good warrior. The first part of our agreement should be honored. Mark Tatiana's soul. Okay, with uh, that, you, I'll tell everyone. Sure. I'll, I'll tell everyone to group up. Irina, come to me. Okay. Uh, Ismark, hang on. Let me. Yep. Ismark's like, yes, Irina, Zeros will protect you. Come up. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> Ismark's his buddy. Dude. He's Come your on, buddy, you, man. Zeke, yeah. your turn next. Uh, you see Zeros call back, um, and yeah, you, you see they've gone to engage some warriors, but some phantom warriors are beginning to emerge from the doorway behind the the group as well. What would you like to do? 
Okay. Um, I will. I think as an action, I'm gonna um, just place a hand on Rose's shoulder and just reassure her and just say, you know, be strong. We can do this together. I'm here for you. And then I'll um, convert um, one of my sorcery points as a bonus action into a level one spell slot, please. Okay. Sure. Cool. Uh, that the whole turn. You, that's that's everything you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Stay with yeah, the back. Perfect. Pack. Okay. Uh, Ismark the Lesser will move into the room joining Jesper and he will attempt to uh, fight uh, alongside Jesper seeing that the physical weapons are less effective and he doesn't have any magic really so he will attack as well uh, his first hit is parried this creature brings it up and parries it away uh, with its ghostly weapons and armor but the second longsword strike is true um, and he brings it crashing down uh, only for a small amount of damage though only for about two points of damage uh, that's already halved um, as he does and then with a final third blow with his hand axe uh, he hits and that also begins pulling away some of the essence um, from the creature but again barely really having any major effect the weapons kind of just passing through it as it does uh, Ziki do you have any magic to enchant weapons or, or anything we can't hit these things uh, he calls out to you um, that is his turn Irina uh, or Tatiana shall I say uh, will uh, look and sort of nod her head, and she will move up to behind Ismark and Zeros. Um, you see her, for the first time though, you see her kind of close her eyes, she reaches out, touches your hand, Jesper. Um, Don't lose hope. Not yet. And you watch as your rapier, right? A thin line of white energy coalesces along the blade uh you deal it counts as magical and you will deal d4 radiant damage as long as irena is concentrating on it and alive <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is d4. that is it nice uh rose uh, and it counts as magical which is probably the more beneficial thing right now is that yeah you uh you would strike with full power with your rapier. Yeah, we don't have any um, magic weapons. This, this is a bit poop. You've got one. It's poop. Yeah, not with I the right person. I hope you find person, some more though, too. Unfortunately. Yeah. I'm gonna Grr, use my good, sword. Real good job. Soon. You're looking for one. <laughs> um, I would like to probably um. Can I? I can't move myself, but can I move myself one square to the left? Would oh, I get sorry. a bead on. Oh, that music got really loud then. I don't know if that's just me. Oh. It is quite loud. It's been loud oh, for me. Sorry. Thanks. It's uh, very sort of like. Why that went um, uh, so, sorry, to the left, yeah? I'm just going to set it so you can control basically, it. Basically, I want to. I want to be in a position where I can get a bead on one of the, like, maybe the middle ghost in the left-hand room. Uh, so you would need to go 5, 10, 15, 20... I'd say if you move to here, then yes, you can strike at this one at the very back of the room. You can get a very clear shot. Can't the... get the one next to him. The left-hand room uh, is closed You could off, really. if you move... Uh, no, both doors are open. Okay. Both doors went whoosh, and flew open. You'd actually have to move into the room to get the one in the middle because the angle would be too sharp. Uh, maybe you could do it from here, actually. If you kind of press right up against the open window, uh, open doorway, you could shoot through Jesper and Is Ismark, basically, Wait, to what? target the one in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I basically I want, to, uh, <laughs> I want to uh, cast Hail of Thorns, okay. which... If I hit a creature, the creatures within five feet of it have to make a saving throw. So would that so get the only the problem here on is either side? Sadly not, because this room is much larger than it appears. Each square is um, actually oh. ten feet. They're all fight like it's like there's four or five foot squares within each map square. Um, oh. So there is currently they are they are you know bundled up. You could like maybe ready an action and say when they you know come when they move forward, I'll try and catch as many of them as I can. In the, the hail okay. of thorns, you could do that. I will, I will save it, and what I will do is I will instead just take two shots. I'll bonus action um, cast my Duda Slayer's Prey, and then Slayers, I'll just take yeah. two 
few shots at the one that's furthest away. Okay, yeah, so this that. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Go for Natural it. 20. Oh. See? Roll 20. It oh. swings around about, but it comes round sometimes. Okay, so max, max, max damage won. on the dice. Max damage on all dice, by the way. So your yeah. your Slayer's so... Prey damage will be maxed as well. And then just and roll them the all again. the D4 The bless. Oh, yeah. Not to damage, only no, to attack rolls. Oh, damage? Oh, yeah. Um, God damn. Which you guys so, need to remember uh, yeah. that you get the D4 to your attack rolls too. Not that uh, anybody's missed, eight, I think. Nine, seven. So 12 base damage plus another D8, which is a 7. So 19. Um, did you roll your Slayer's Prey again as well? Because that gets that gets maxed. I haven't. So doubled. that's so it's going to be six plus four, so ten for Slayer's Prey altogether as well. So it was twelve damage base plus ten for Slayer's Prey, then another seven, plus right? Seven. So 22, yeah. 29 points of damage, which is awesome. Um, it is reduced somewhat by the yeah. them being ethereal ghosts but yeah it's still like a solid 14 point of damage as this arrow whoof, passes through its body kind of almost like a puff of cloud or of essence of ghostly essence erupts from the the hole that it passes through and uh, that's only the first I shot so second shot we'll shoot again please uh 16 plus nine that's a hit that for sure will hit so uh uh Three, four, five, six, seven points of damage on that one. Seven points of damage on that one. So again, the second arrow passes through, not quite as impactful, but still uh, peeling away essences of these creatures as you do so. Um, end of your turn? Uh, yes. Dog's body. Hello. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, uh, I don't think I can get to anyone um i can kind of i can, can kind of if i get here can is this guy is this one in range like if i uh, you currently have the problem of jesper is currently there um so yeah. there's no space so, really for you um you could yeah. go if you go yeah you could go up one um so you could kind of move past jesper uh like here mm. Well, you can't because that's obviously passing across open space. What's yeah. your movement? Just normal thirty feet. You don't have any boosted 30. movement. 30 you can go feet. the other way. No. Go behind you, or you could. You know, I don't really the three. want to. No? You know, I've only just got dog's body. I don't really want to enter a room full of ghosts on my own. Um, oh. Okay. You know, no, I'm. I'm not feeling it. There. Not today, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone has just off. left dog's body alone in a corridor. <laughs> Ziki's there. Um, Ziki's with you. I'm here. Uh, yeah, I guess you are with me. Technically, I'm still in the corridor. I could move. Technically. Do you know what? I think Dog's Body being the way Dog's Body is, um, I would like to hold my action um, to mm -hmm. stand next to Zeke. And if anything, if any ghosties come and attack uh, us, um, yep. I will then attack them. Uh, you can do that. I'm going to give you two reminders. One, if you want to do any bonus action stuff, you need to do it now. So if you want okay. to activate any case, cool powers, you I need to do them now. Bonus action, Crimson Right, uh, the Right of Frost. So let me roll a d6 Damagios uh, for that on mm -hmm. me. And I'm guessing that, yeah, Four we see damage. Dog's Body cuts into themselves with the axe in some way. Uh, do you, like, drag it across, mm. like, your chest where all the other scars are? Like, yeah, so yeah, you watch as... Then... Dog's body drags this giant blade, and where it draws this red line, the tip of the axe, the blade of the crescent axe, becomes covered in thick rime and frost. Yeah, it doesn't actually oh, bleed, it almost just comes out blue and blood hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. um, old, old Matty Mercer class. Yeah. Um, they've, um, they've changed it a little bit. Yeah, yeah he's updated it. it. Made He's made it a lot more balanced. Uh, the other one yeah. is, don't forget, you don't only get one attack on a readied action. So you, if you got extra attack, really? you only get one. Yeah, yeah. Had okay. this, had this old uh, Tommy boy. Um, okay. Yeah, readied action because it's not on your turn. You don't get extra attack. Confirmed by Jeremy Crawford. YouTube comments. Um, yeah. Damn. <laughs> they uh, but yeah. Oh, well, I'm absolutely. I will put myself in a protective stance should anything 
attack. Can it can it be attack myself or Zeki, or is that like too much? Um, yeah, you could say basically as if it comes within fighting range, you can you whack it, um, which is a good thing because yeah, they do. Now these ones, let's see. I need to use the old uh, rulery ruler. Um, God, I can never remember how to use this. You drag it like this. Fifteen feet. Yeah, these guys are actually not going to be able to reach you this turn, oh. but the one of them will get next to you, so you can make an attack against this guy. And then they all come just floating. In fact, they pass through the walls. They don't actually come through the doorway. Mm. They just float through the wall and then appear next to you through the windows. Kind of just oh, drifting good. over open space. <gasps> As they ah. loom in front of you. And now they're going to make... Uh, two, three of them are going to make attacks. One against uh, One is going to attack Jesper. The other two are going to attack uh, Zeros. Um, Jesper, one attacks you twice with its long sword. Nine to hit? No. Thirteen to hit? No. You dodge to the sides as these two, uh, you know, semi-ethereal swords come sweeping down in great blows towards you. Xeros, uh, twenty-one to hit? Yes. Uh, fifteen <laughs> to hit? No. <laughs> right, so the 21, you're going to take six, da, 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 uh, nine points of damage. Poof, one Ow. chop uh, comes down towards you, and it, as it, it, it kind of phases through parts of your armor and cuts into your flesh as it does this. Um, and then the second one is going to attack you. That's a 15 uh, nope. or a 22. Ooh, yeah. For another 10 like points amazing, uh, of damage. <laughs> yeah, you kind of go to parry. I'm swiping my heart. Yeah, so it's like you go to parry, but the sword just kind of like phases through and just cuts into you anyway, um, as you Damn do so. Uh, and damage. then the other ones literally just rush towards Zeki and Dog's Body, Dog's Body, your ready to action goes off. Cool. Uh, I will roll to hit, and that is 24 to hit. Uh, yeah, that this... hits. <laughs> yeah, one of nice. these. One. Yeah, these guys don't have a bad AC, but you're doing really well at hitting them. Uh, plus four. Um, so that is nine points of um, great axe damage and an extra mm -hmm. three points of frost damage. Cool. Uh, I, I, I'll check this later. For now, I'm going to assume that when you use your um, crimson right, it makes your weapon magical. Yes, um, it does. Yeah. Yep, uh, okay, cool. That. That's awesome. Perfect. So yeah, so yeah, you, the, the axe actually cuts into it like it would a, a creature of flesh and blood. And you see it kind of reel back. It doesn't scream. It doesn't make any noise in pain. But it kind of goes through the motions of doing so. Uh, Jesper, we'll get through one more round of combat, I reckon. Um, Jesper, your turn. After receiving this radiant uh, imbuing Blessing. of my weapon, I nod with a determination to make sure nothing bad happens to Irina and go to fight the ghost in front of me with this renewed strength that yeah, that sounds awesome. Irina yeah. gave me. I'm yeah. so thankful oh. to Irina for doing that to me, and that I feel like our bond is really strong. Stronger. Now. So yeah. Here I go. Uh, this is for Tatiana slash Irina. This one. I'm going to do <laughs> <Yep>. a <laughs> slashing flourish using my bardic inspiration. He's really fucking milking it. I love it. Sure. <laughs> uh, and this one's for the friend who will never 16. betray me. Just barely hits. You manage to weave the rapier through its defenses, striking the creature. Okie dokie. So that's a, uh, that's eight piercing. Yep. And then D4 radiant. One. Oh, it happens on each. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three points. Uh, only on the rapier attacks, though. Only on the rapier okay, not attacks. The dagger. Okay. No. And then. So yeah, the first one psh, strikes true, and you can see that the weapon now has more purchase as it strikes I'll into the I'll phantom warriors. Slashing flourish uh, damage now as well. Sure. Uh, so that's D6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five points of. Extra. Another five points of damage. Yeah, this my... really kind of tears through its armor, and you see the the ghost kind of stumble back. Um, perfect. All right, and then uh, rolling for my dagger now. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's nine to hit, so it doesn't hit that. That one, one does not. Yeah, this one it, the the phantom sort of phases into the wall and then back, and your dagger kind of <laughs> down the stone wall, sparks flying everywhere um, as it avoids it. Uh, as you do so. Anything else on your turn? Uh, no. 
in that case, it's your boy, Zeros the boy. It's his turn. <laughs> Take it now. Can I ask about, if I was to do an attack roll, can I say that I don't want to do like any damage? I just want it because all I have to do is mark Tatiana. I feel like I know what's going to happen anyway when I do. But uh, how like, are you going to do it? Like, what are you going to do? Like, are you describe to me what? How? How do you do it? Do you like grab her arm and like cut? Like make a small cut? Do you like, you know, plunge the sword into her chest? Like you, you tell me, and then I'll tell <laughs> no, you if it deals damage or not. It's like when she finally gets to me like she runs to Jesper, blesses the dagger and then gets to mm -hmm. me when she turns to me after I've taken a beating from these ghosts I've kind of got like mm. the he who grins pointed at her chest like it's almost both points are at the center of her chest and all I want to do is just twist it ever so slightly just to mark her skin like enough to cut with the sharp edges of he who grins okay. you're gonna have to make an attack roll because she's wearing armor and you're still going to have to do enough to, like, mark her through the armor. Um, okay. Sure. So. 24. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of so, fiery, too. <laughs> that's, and that's the difference. So, you, you push it forward, and she kind of turns. She blesses, she blesses Jesper. She turns to find this, the point of the sword at her chest. She looks down. What are you doing, Xeros? And you have Ismark has enough time. He's like turning his head as you flick it, and it spins around like the the tips of the points form a perfect circle. You you see like red crimson spilling out from like underneath her her armor kind of thing, oh, where shit. you kind of pierce through, and this almost in the center of her chest, the center. But the flames lick at her skin, and you see that the flames almost seem to form three triangle shape burns in the circle um the same three triangles that look that were on the pommel of the blade of asmodeus um as you twist it and she yelps in pain as these these hell these hell flames lick at her chest and her body ah, ah, and she kind of like stumbles back she's gonna take some damage but not a lot um but yeah you've definitely hurt her like you you don't do significant damage but you very clearly hurt her with the with this these flames more than anything okay um, do i do i get anything out but, of uh the blade yeah you do <laughs> well done my dragon warrior one down two to go Uh, but you see Ismark, what are you doing? In slow-mo, he's like, what are you doing? As I really <laughs> stumbled back, her, you know, her shirt ripped open and this, this burning sigil now emblazoned on her chest. You see, yes, but you see have seen all that. of this happen as well. Rose sees it happen yeah. as well. Ziki can see it from her position Ooh. if she's not too distracted by the ghosts. I think Dog's body might be the only one who doesn't because he's too busy fighting. Um, but yeah, Slow the rest emotion. of you all see it. All yeah. I mean, if, if uh, Ziki sees it, then like from the other side of where Irina Tatiana is like stumbling backwards, I'm just like looking at Ziki the entire time, um, just staring right into her eyes. I think she knows, right? Like she knows why I've done it. <laughs> Maybe I leave that to Rhiannon. Uh, I think speaking I've, I've of, her the deal. that's that's gonna make I'm gonna make that your whole turn, I'm afraid, uh, Tom yeah, Hazel, because it's quite an important thing. Uh, cool. Let's try and just quickly ram run through this uh, remaining round. Ziki, what do you do? Uh, I'm just Ziki is just looking right back at Zeros, just shocked. Like she cannot believe he's just done that. Like in clear as day. In the middle of everybody as well. <laughs> I had to do it, like, man. What, what are you doing? Like, what have you done? Like, just in shock. Like, yeah. she, she can't just, believe. So you just can't believe. Don't even, don't doesn't even take a turn. Just is staring in his direction. I, I'm just yeah. I'm just yeah. Just just shocked. Just shell shocked. Rad. Absolutely shell shocked. Right. Okay. Uh, is Mark? He's being he's kind of fighting these these phantoms, so he doesn't really have a chance but to kind of defend himself. 
Um, and he does lash out a couple of times at them uh, around him. Uh, but he is like, Cirrus, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? I, it must be Strahd. Strahd has gotten to his mind. Um, but he does, oh, his in, in his anger, in his anger, he strikes one of these uh, phantoms as hard as he can. Uh, so that's going to be eight, uh, 11, five points of damage. Uh, I'm not going to give him all of his attacks because he's like turning at Xeros. He's like, what? Why? He just looks, he looks <laughs> betrayed. Like you genuinely, he looks like confused, but also just, he is he, there's almost like it, he's, you see that sense of where somebody's trying to make sense of it and he's like, he must be, Strahd's done something to him. My friend wouldn't have done this, um, is the kind of sense you get coming from him. Uh, Tatiana stumbles back, like, uh, what, what is this? What are you doing? And she will throw her hands forward, and I need uh, Xeros and the two Phantom Warriors to make a strength saving throw, or a con saving throw, sorry. A con save? Mm. Uh, 13, not great. 13, it's not a lot of damage. Uh, you're going to take seven thunder damage as a thunderous force erupts from Tatiana's hands. Um, it sends you flying back. It also sends one of the ghosts out of the window, but it just sort of flies through the wall, so it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was uh, seven. Three to that. Was that a thunder wave? Uh, yeah, it was a thunder wave. Yeah, it's a thunder wave that she just whoosh, throws forward. Um, no. some thunderous force uh, see she seems somewhat shocked uh, not quite sure where that came from uh, Rose Rose is going to point her bow at Xeros with absolute <laughs> fury in her eyes uh, well, but then normally go on go on go on go on, go on. she's going to compose herself realising that they're in a situation which needs to be dealt with first and at the very she's going to make him think that she's going to shoot him and at the very last second she's going to turn and hit the one next to uh ismark twice sure cool but Go she's gonna it. she she wants him to know that she is furious she could, she could i mean in response, yeah, she could have. if you're pointing she, the bow yeah. at me, i'm raising yeah. the sword to you <laughs> like Mm. Uh, okay. What? Normally, as a point, normally I'm not a fan of PvP in D&D RPGs. I think that Curse of Strahd, <laughs> I think that I make we can make an exception for this particular campaign. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, sure, go for it, Katie. Let's see, uh, let's see what we roll. I really kind of uh, want you to roll a one. Like, if you roll a one now, that's going straight in Xeros' eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, I rolled... That uh, was an 18 plus 9. Uh yeah. So that will hit. Um, so it will be uh, eight, nine, ten, like twelve damage on the arrow and three damage from Slayer's Prey, and okay. then second attack. Another arrow passes through it. Second one. That is oh. a one. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I'm not going to have it do one. any damage. But it, it's, you know, you are not aiming for Xeros, but Xeros, this, this arrow across the cheek, the thin line of blood uh, is scraped along. Um, was I it meant she'll you? just say, touch her again, and I won't miss. That's it. Miss a lot. Nice. Uh, dog's body. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you got ghosts. <laughs> so many ghosts. Oh, oh fuck! <laughs> and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of, you know, I'm, I'm hefting my axe, and I just see Zeke just kind of, uh, I'm just gonna be like, hey, hey, dragon lady, come on, not the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and attack the one next to me. Oh, that is a nine to hit on my first swing, which I guess is not gonna hit. Doesn't hit. Misses. Oh, Jesus Christ. And a 12 on the second. Back. Both of these swing wide. You cut into the stone. The glass of the nearby window shatters. But neither blow strikes the ghost floating in front of you. Um, anything else? 
Here's the real dog's body. <laughs> it's too cute and clean. Um, no, nothing else. Okay. Uh, last thing then. Uh, a bunch of these ghosts retaliate. One floats back through the walls uh, towards uh, Xeros. Uh, one is going to attack Jesper twice. One is going to attack Ismark twice. One is going to attack Xeros twice. Uh, two are going to attack Dog's Body twice. And one's going to attack Zeki twice. Uh, so here we go. One against Jesper. Uh, that is a 24 to hit to you, Jesper. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. It's only six points of slashing damage as this one okay. kind of cuts in. And then the next, the second attack is a eight to hit. So you manage to throw yourself yeah. out of the way. Um, the first one strikes, uh, cutting a small blow against Ismark. Uh, that first one is a hit. That's an 18. The second one is a miss. Uh, Ismark takes uh, seven points of damage. Uh, he pretty much healed up to full uh, with a short rest, So, but he hasn't got any hit dice left. Um, and then Xeros, two attacks against you. That's a natural 20, Xeros, uh, against Ooh. you. So you can enjoy this. Um, that's going to be 17 points of damage. The one that flies oh, through, you're not kind of expecting it to just stab you through the wall, and it's like, ah, it catches you right in the deep in the ribs. Um, the second attack is a natural one. So this one, as oh. it strikes through, it kind of comes stumbling through, uh, and you manage to kind of pirouette and pivot out of the way uh, of the second strike as it does so. Hey, Dog's uh, body. the chances of getting any healing? <laughs> <laughs> you let the healer die, Maybe off your sister. Your sister might, but uh, you need to talk to her, I think. Um, Dog's body, a 15 to hit you. Yeah, that'll be a hit. And a um, 9 kind of, to hit you. The 9 doesn't. What kind of damage is it? Uh, what kind of damage is it? It is force damage. That's fine. I'll take that. Yeah, well, you remember, it's only when you... Only when no, things um, happen. I was more looking at necrotic. Uh, oh yes, that's right, because you got resistant, haven't you? Uh, no, this is force damage, room. unfortunately. That is 12 points of damage from the first uh, Phantom Warrior. The second Phantom Warrior, um, 17 hits you, and a 15 hits you again. So, uh, that he get, They get oh, two sorry. attacks each. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so the next one hits you for another 4 points of force damage, and then another 5 points of force damage, so another 9 points of force damage from the second Look, Phantom. Ouchies. And then Zeki, last one is against you. Uh, that is a 12 to hit you. Doesn't hit. Doesn't hit. And then a 21 to hit you. That do. Ooh, and that's a max damage. That is going to be 13 points of force damage as this spectral Ooh. longsword cuts through, carving through your draconic scales. Uh, and on this very tense battle, uh, in these, you know, the moonlight streaking through the broken windows, these phantoms floating in and out of the walls as we see Xeros staring towards Zeki, Rose, Jesper and Ismark both turning towards Xeros and we just see these hellish flames along the He Who Grins blade and Xeros you just hear in your mind you just hear <laughs> and that is where we will end today's episode Nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, boy. Yeah, but I nice. well, I'll be out of this one, huh? <laughs> Tom, do you remember when you said to me, you were like, Mark, I think this sword might be really too overpowered. And I was like, well, we'll see, Tom. Um, yeah, it does kind of have its strings attached, which I knew would come up. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> I guess I didn't have to mark her there, but I was also like, I mean, he. He wants me to. And also, like, I love it. was looking I for love the it. earliest it opportunity cool. to do so. Um, yeah, it was rad. It was super cool. I mean, when's a better I mean, time than a exactly deadly combat? you did exactly what Xerus was going to do. You, you did yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, what yeah. Xerus would have done. So Great, great RP. Good work on, great, on doing know. what your character would do. Yeah, yeah and I'm sure all the rest well. will follow. Yeah. Like the circular marking with the three triangles, I love that. That was really cool. Yeah. yeah that oh. was cool. Well, when you when you described it as like the two points and then twisting it, like the idea of both points just going and then forming this perfect circle. Mm. Um, yeah, that was really cool. I thought that was super cool. Holy, cool. nice. Holy crap. Holy. Well, friends, it's so good to play D and D with you again. I miss playing with you. Uh, I'm glad to be back uh, with yeah. my chums. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. I, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I thought that was a great one. I thought that was a really cool, it was an amazing episode. Sort of 
RP one exploring yeah. Argon Vault, and then we ended with a bit of a kind of kick ass, uh, a dead, a very scary fight. This is this is no easy fight, by the way. This is uh, this is a pretty scary one. So uh, awesome! Thank you very much. Um, thank you everybody at home for watching as well and supporting. Uh, if there are any donos, Tommy's going to read them out now. Right now, uh, yeah, I am. Nightjar says, "Hey, it's a glasses crew." Oh, and right. <laughs> I noticed that before we started. Everyone's wearing glasses, yeah. but drop. Uh, he was going to go get gunners, I think. Minor, Didn't get the memo. Minor just computer, um, like, blue screen ones. Mine, minor uh, blue light glasses. They're not actually prescription. They're just for sitting yeah. at my computer for long hours. I don't have bad eyesight. Minor because I'm hey, blind wow. without them. Wow. Yeah. I just, <laughs> me too. I just wow. sit here too long. It's so blind uh, glasses. I got no... I got no contact New Alex. left. <laughs> oh yeah, new Alex. Uh, that initial dog's body Aussie-ish accent. If only Xeros was missing a hand and was slightly more talkative, and know, was right? less intelligent, and a barbarian <laughs> Goliath. Call Bertie. <laughs> no, you can't <laughs> let that guy loose on Barovia. This is too excellent and too dark. Oh, Bertie, miss you, bud. Uh, one eye boy. One eye um, with a quarter hundo. Hi, Rollers. Being all caught up on a Rose yeah. and Strahd, I've been watching Lightfall to fill my time. It's taken two months, but the party uh, has just taken down. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. Love what you guys do and keep up the great work. Oh, and Judo. Nice. Yeah. Judo. <laughs> oh, all those feral horns. I oh, miss those we wacky noodles. Miss those guys. Glenodles. 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 <laughs> uh, let's go 09. Uh, my first time being able to donate and thank some of my favorite D&D players despite being behind on the VODs. Uh, I've been hoping to see Falcon make an appearance after finding uh, High Rollers through DCA. Uh, Mark, your Esmeralda and Zopa weren't bad either. Zopa, am I saying that right? Zopa, yeah. It was basically yep. the turtle from Kung Fu Panda. Um. <laughs> Master right. Oogway. Master Oogway. <laughs> uh, Varus, with the donation and the message. Thank you very much. Yorkshire Dave. E, by gum. You never disappoint, Mark. Well played with traps. You had Tom sold. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know how Yorkshire people are. Robin Dog's body, too. Great stuff, Kim. I vote for Oz accent. And well, done on one shot the other day. The other day sorry. A red the day. belter. Well done. Wishing you all you. a Laura Laura love. <laughs> Very Laura, good. Laura Laura love. Laura Laura love. Maybe uh, that's the, the accent you should give Dog's Body. <laughs> Yeah, I think Dog's body is going to have a rotating uh, bunch of accents. <laughs> Just like He's him. getting there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we are. Now. <laughs> the the person I don't know. Too good. With a uh, very generous donation. Glad I could catch live again. Uh, 2020, am I right? Love and Dog's body, but will forever miss Shadow. She inspired me for more than one of my own characters. Well, there you go. Shadow was very cool. Um, we, Shadow, Shadow was very cool. cool. Uh, she'll be back. Hamster Tickler. Uh, oh, yes. Welcome, Dog's Body. Here's some coin to buy some soap. What soap? <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. And Ravager 4. Uh, oh, God. My chrome is just completely blanked out. There it is. Uh, Ravager 4. Oh, man, what an episode. New characters, phantoms, and betrayal afoot. Poor dog's body. He has no bloody idea what he just <laughs> walked into, does he? <laughs> no. Oh, He's just like, boy. what the fuck? Oh, what are you got ghosts? What are you guys doing? Why is this fucking party I've just walked into? <laughs> it's a pretty damn good <laughs> intro, considering how serious everyone else was. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I figured I'm I wanted to. I'm a filthy hobo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I stink. Food? <laughs> It's the kind of character that is needed, I think, in this group yeah, right now. Yeah, absolutely. I we need a little Especially bit for of, poor uh, Zeke. I feel like I feel like Dog's body is going to be like Zeke's friend of like happy friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy <laughs> yeah. sunshine and oranges. Be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone <Yeah>. hates me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. The person that hates you most was taken by my best friend. 
<laughs> oh. Zeke. Oh my god, you bitch! Wow. We didn't. We now, don't. We don't hate Zeke. We don't hate Zeke. <laughs> There's so much that I does hate. Hey, finish that sentence. Oh. Finish that sentence, Katie. <laughs> we were we hate disappointed Zeke. by the actions that were taken. Yeah, we like the disappointed uh, parents. Hate- They're like. <laughs> We're not yeah, mad. Okay. I'm not mad. Just I'm disappointed. just disappointed. <laughs> Your brother, however, can fucking yeah. get in the sea. Yeah, <laughs> okay. he can die in a ditch. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an evil character. Uh, oh, my that's everything, by the way. Thing. Yeah, that's everything. That's all donations. Thank you very much, everybody, for being so generous as always. And I'm sure that's there was a load of gifted subs. Uh, let me just check the Discord as well. From I should have done this uh, already. Didn't. Um, yeah. sure. have a looky, let's have a look um, well while you're looking at that just again thank you guys so much for supporting <laughs> us thank you for checking out High Rollers uh, 50k views away <laughs> from 1 million views on um, Eroes episode 1 50k away oh, 50k right. a million views wow, on Eroes episode good. 1 Woo, if you amazing. haven't watched <laughs> our other campaign Eroes well, oh the glasses the spin He's spinning the glasses um, again <laughs> If you haven't watched our seen... other campaign of Roas, <laughs> it is like 78 episodes, but do check it out, especially that first one. Um, yes. Yeah, good, yeah isn't it? do that. Go on, Katie. Oh, it's Sorry. Right. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. No, I was just going to say, I've just seen the, the gif that Nightjar posted in the staff room yeah. in Discord, which is just yeah, so dog's yeah, uh, body for Nightjar. the entire stream. <laughs> Nightjar. Um, <laughs> there's the Vash Rota. gifted... Vash gifted me and Mark subs to the High Rollers channel. Uh, thank you very yeah, much. Nice, also, nice. she pinged me, pinged me exclusively to say, Xeros sucks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, oh, I don't oh, think Xeros sucks. I think Xeros is Thanks, awesome. I think you're all awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we will be back for more Curse of Strahd next week. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Sunday for our other High Rollers uh, game uh, that you can check out. Uh, and we'll see you then. Take Tom, care. you really need bye to bye. clean your glasses. I know bye. I do. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Bye. 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 bye.